Hey guys, it's Todd from Like Minded Lunatics bringing you another drink, play, swear. It's all we do around here. I mean, honestly, if I'm going to be totally serious with you, it's all Mark lets me do around here. I don't know why you described it like that. <laughs> uh, there's a cage where I go yeah. when we're off film. Let's just be upfront about that. Okay, so uh, what are we doing here? Well, it's drink, play, swear, so we do exactly that. Play a game, usually a classic one, pair it with a beverage, and I tell you a story. But today, we're here with Mark Gifford, Mark Griffgroff, Mark grumpy Saurus. That's fine. Uh, good. <laughs> um, and uh, we are playing Killer Instinct. Oh, man. Okay, so I'm, I uh, played this game a little bit as a kid, and I've played modern versions of it lately. Uh, but I didn't play it a ton. You played this game a lot, right? A whole lot. This is probably my favorite fighter. So I'm excited to be here together for another Drink Play Swear, uh, where you can show me... Uh, I showed you the last game we played together. Uh, you get hopefully a slightly better game. <laughs> show me some more Killer Instinct. I was always a Mortal Kombat fan. Of course, a Street Fighter fan. And then when you when you started getting so many games after that, like what was the dinosaur one? Oh god, the claymation type one. Yeah. Uh, well, I wish you. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, it, like it was fine. Yeah. But you didn't spend much time with it because you just saw it as a derivative game. It did feel yeah. And I mistook Killer Instinct as a derivative game, but this game, and you're gonna kind of show me as I watch you play this first. Um, and I don't know here. how I'm gonna do. I literally have not played this classic version. For years, so sure. But this game, it's like a combo system, and in terms of you know, with Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, it was just set moves. You know, you could pick a character and do like three things. Yeah. If you learn three things and the uppercut and the trip them, the you sweep were... the leg, you could do okay. Yeah. But this always intimidated me because it's uh, it looks more complicated. And this was really one of the first ones that had linking combos. Yeah. <clears throat> so you're absolutely right. I think Mortal Kombat 2 was the game that kind of preceded this one. And this one came out right before Mortal Kombat 3, where in oh. part 3 did have combo moves yes. in Mortal Kombat. Part 2 did not. It really it really just had, like, you're right, you could do your special, you could do an uppercut, you could do a sweep. And then you get your background fatalities, which, you know, that opened the game up because Street Fighter seemed plain after that. Yes. But I feel like this, instead of being derivative, found a way to build the style of play. Because they had what they called linking moves that would lead you into bigger combos. So right. when you were playing it, you could get combos as high as, like, 15 and around 16 or 17 in normal play. And then ultra combos, if you did an ultra, 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 over like a hundred hits. And so this is one of the first games that did that. And there's a great... You'd be so disappointed if you were in the arcade. And uh, I think you're going to tell us about an arcade experience in a minute. But, uh, you know, when you're a kid and you're trying out, you got you got 50 cents left. Yeah. And you're going to try a hard game. And somehow Killer Instinct is not occupied. Right. You go there, you put your two quarters in, and then some older kid walks up. Oh, here. Let's let's have the beverage, and then I'll I'll start talking more. But uh, what do we got for for the beverage today, dude? So I'm doing a I'm uh, I'm hoping my control yeah is still good. Okay. Uh, so I got us uh, super awesome yeah Hellas Lagers from my fav one of my favorite breweries here in town, Austin Beer Works. Nice. Well, cheers. Cheers, man. Here's to it. So there's a great documentary about this video game on YouTube. I don't know if you've seen it. One of the things they talked about was trying to distinguish themselves from all the other fighters at the time. Okay. So one of the things that they did was is they intentionally programmed the Ultra Combo! Yeah. Twice the decibel level, and it didn't tell anyone that. Yeah. And so when you had people coming into the video game arcade to, to set You them, could hear it from across the place! Because it only went that high when you got Ultra Combo. So they would adjust the levels based off of this, off normal play, but then the Ultra Combo was double the decibel level. See, that's awesome because what I was going to say is if you go to the arcade and you're going to play, you don't know the game well, you want to try it out when no one's looking because you're not an expert yet. Right. But then some older kid would walk up who kicked ass at it, you know? Yes. And, uh, and and put the coins in, pull an ultra combo on you, and the loudness would draw everyone over. It would. And you're, now your last 50 cents, you're demoralized in front of this kid who's five years older than you, and you walk out of there in shame. And that's what they said they did <laughs> on purpose. Wow. It's because there were so many fighters. And now I like to play with Jago because I'm always the karate guy. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm always the karate guy in whatever game I play. See, I'm usually, if there's a monster, ah. Like, I'll be Blanca. Right. 
Um, I also like getting good at the female characters uh, because I oh feel my God, like I'm gonna get killed. I can already tell it because the the control. Uh, I'm gonna blame it on the controller. Do it. You're gonna persevere. So. Um, you know, I, I like getting good with the monsters because aesthetically, I think they were cool. Yes. And then the the women characters because your buddies would never choose them. Right. And so if you got really good at a Chun Li, or you got really good at a Katana or something. Yes. Then you're gonna smoke them, and then you could even do a little. And this is we were talking about toxic masculinity in the last one. You could even employ a little toxic masculinity into your buddy after you beat him with a girl. You go <laughs> kicked your ass as a girl. That's right. I beat you with orchid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loser. Okay, so I am getting killed here, Todd. Yeah. All right, so just talk to me while while you're uh, acclimating to a, a controller. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about like what um, what sets this apart in terms of actually using the buttons and and the D-pad. So that's the thing. So I'm using the the Xbox controller, and on the video game arcade, it went from it, it went from the uh, lowest level, mid level, and high level. Yes. And you would actually have to hit high level, mid level, low level to like do the combos. It looked like a Neo Geo game because it, it was like it was like three across and then below that three across. It right? was, yes. And because they're on like different levels on the actual Xbox controller, you can't and I'm blaming it on the controller. That is like the weakest totally uh lamest thing. Well no, but it's also every kid since the Atari or the Coleco. I know has blamed the controller at some point, and to some degree, you have a right to do it. Oh my god. But that dude did smoke your See, ass. See, I am getting destroyed. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to pause the game and get the better controller out. This is terrible. So, all right, so you uh, you watch this. Jesus. You watch this, uh, you watched other people play it, and you played it a ton. Yes. Right? So I I worked at a bookstore and uh, my friend worked at You want me to just jump in so you can you can get a rhythm and tell the story? There we go. Hey folks, guess what? Ain't so easy to play a game and tell a story at the same time. It's so hard. That's right. All right. And here by the way, I just want you to know. <laughs> you know, okay, Mark and I teach public speaking sometimes, right? This was terrible, Todd! <laughs> This was terrible. Mark and I teach public speaking sometimes, and what I tell my students before they get up on stage oh. is, here's one thing you should know. People don't really care how you do half as much as you think they care. They don't care. Is so, that true? I feel like they, I, I'm not sure. Hang on, let me try something real my quick. My brother-in-law, like my lunatic Charlie, admitted to me that uh, he doesn't, when he listens to, to, the, to my videos, he doesn't watch them most of the time. He's working at his computer, but he's just listening to it. Right. So he goes, when you get thrown by the game... I don't know. I have no idea, because uh, I'm just there for the story. <laughs> so whether or not we figure out this controller situation... is not a big deal. And no one gives a shit. Okay. You know what I mean? All also, right. I'm loving... So usually when I record Drink, Play, Swear, I'm in my home with my sweet children close by to me, and I do my best in life to give them the good words, to be art as articulate as possible, even in my anger. And so I don't curse a lot at home. But here I'm in Mark's house today. I'm, I'm, letting, them all, oh, I'm letting them all out. So let's uh, let's do a little more swearing than normal. And because this is a special drink place swear where I don't have the controller in my hand, I'm just gonna be chugging on this bad boy. Talk to me, Mark. Okay, so we hung out at the arcade constantly. And uh, after I got done working, we would uh, we would play into the night. And there was this one guy who always hung out with us, or tried to hang out with us. His name was, we called him Crazy Larry. His name was just Larry, but we called him Crazy Larry. I like tried to hang out with us. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> he was one of those guys who you're walking in the mall and uh, you would hear on the other side of the mall, yeah. Hey, Holmes! And he had no business using terms like that. Oh. And he would run the entire mall to come and talk to you. Oh, no. And I want you to picture. It's like here you try. It's a little embarrassing. So I want you to picture. I'm going to switch up. I'm going to switch up the character. I'm going spinal. Ooh, I like spinal. I don't know anything about him. But um, like I said, I like a monster. And he looks like a pirate skeleton monster. Whoa, that started before it zoomed in. All right, keep going. So I want you to picture John Malkovich. At his heaviest and most sweaty. Malkovich, Malkovich. So Crazy Larry was in his 40s. Okay. He was balding, and he always had like two or three strands that went across. I and feel like we, 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 a lot of your stories about where you grew up, it was a lot of failed middle-aged men, like, picking on teenagers. Why? 
Why are they even around you guys so much? That was always our question. <laughs> Because Crazy Larry was obviously a much older man, and we always wondered if there was something m maybe a little mentally wrong with Crazy Larry. Well, it's sort of like, you know, I remember, you know, watching Days of Confused as a kid, uh, you know, um, uh, you, you watch it and you think all oh, the older kids are always so cool. That, oh. that Even though they graduated, they came around, they're the coolest, they're the strongest. They're the funniest. Just smoke. Look at that this! Guy. You're killing it. I smoke that. Guy. I'm gonna let you keep playing it. Then. I do this every week. Mark. I know. I know. I know. Pro. <laughs> Supreme <laughs> victory! Ah. Jesus Christ! Put your initials in. L M L. So, the other thing about Larry I, that I should describe to set the scene uh -huh. is that he smelled like two-day-old hamburgers. I love him. Every day <laughs> he smelled like two-day-old hamburgers. And one day we were sitting in Was Chelsea. he a cook anywhere? No. One day we were sitting in Chelsea Street Pub before I had to, to go to work and before JJ went to the arcade. You, you're in a pub? No, it was like a... Oh, it's a restaurant. Did you have Piccadilly's here? You didn't have Piccadilly's. I'm a city kid. I don't know what that means. Well, it's a fancier Luby's. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, down for that. So Chelsea Street Pub, kind of like that. So we're sitting there and I'm having my lunch before I go work to go to work. And uh, Crazy Larry comes in. And he sits down with me and JJ, yeah. and immediately JJ goes, well, my appetite's gone. <laughs> because of uh, Crazy Larry's stench. He smells yes. bad. And Larry knows what we're talking about, and Larry goes, I can't help it, fellas. My, uh, my girlfriend, she likes to pee on me. And that was the first time he had ever mentioned a girlfriend, and we were all convinced he didn't have one. But he was, he was describing how his girlfriend would tie him up and urinate on him. Oh my god! This was this was what What am I doing wrong? I don't know what's happening. Uh start. No? Where's your start? Look at this image of you. This is a terrible this image. This is very There we go. It's almost like one of my fantasies That's just right. came true. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> you jump in. And uh so Crazy Layer told us that his girlfriend would tie him up and urinate on him. Because and that was the stench. Here's what I don't understand. And I know all kinds of people are different, okay? Yeah. And maybe I'm oversharing, okay? Yes, I do constantly. But I don't want somebody doing mean stuff to me, especially when it's concerning a sexual encounter. I'm 100%. I'm like, I don't get the BDSM stuff. That's not for me. I certainly don't get someone peeing on don't you. Don't beat up on people. You get, you, be an adult. Right. What are you doing? Well, and what JJ said afterwards, and I still agree with this, I, I, Crazy Larry clear, clear, clearly peed himself. But why was his reaction to yeah. tell us that his girlfriend would tie him up and force him to get peed on? It's like in junior high when you had that friend who'd never had a girlfriend, and uh, you asked them about like girlfriends they've had, and they talked about they were always at summer camp. They were never girlfriends, that you, the girls that you knew at school. It was summer camp. That's right. That no one else would meet. I'm going to have to admit that I also did that. <laughs> That's fair. Dating my wife before we were married. You notice there was a pregnant pause. I was trying to decide if I was going to share this. <laughs> Dating my wife before we were married, like way before we were married, and we were just getting to know each other. She asked, like, you know, questions you ask when you're, you know, young and canoodling and talking and and, and getting to know each other. Sure. It, you know, if I kind of like, you know, had any experience with women, and right. I made up an encounter. Oh my god. Because I told all my buddies about this. See. And if, I knew they were going to be meeting each other and getting together. So you already had the narrative planned. So what was awful is there was no reason to tell this made-up story about right. this previous girlfriend. And it actually hurt her feelings, you see. It took me a very long time to be like, sorry, I was just trying to be cool in front of my buddies. <laughs> that's, that's teenage boy life. Well, there was one day where I came into the, to the mall... And I walk, this is at Richland Fashion, Fashion Mall in, in Waco. Okay. And I walk into the mall and I'm walking by the arcade and there are police everywhere. Like, well, that's obviously not good. I'm going to have to go get the down low from JJ about what happened with this. <laughs> and so I get there at the end of the night after my shift is over. And I walk in and uh, JJ's trying to straighten up the redemption center. Like, yeah. So where everybody, you know, they go in with the, the tickets and to get the stuffed toys and the spider rings and the bouncy balls. Yeah, the, the garbage... Uh, Treats. Yeah. So JJ's trying to straighten all this up, and it's just completely. Jump in. Yeah. It's just completely trashed. Yeah. And so I'm like, JJ, what happened? He's like, man. All right. So here's the thing. Crazy Larry is no longer allowed in, in in the arcade. Great intro. Like, what happened? All right. So uh, Crazy Larry's here, and we were 
we're playing chess at the Redemption Center. I love that for no, like, because it's not, it's definitely not a shorthand name. Like a lot of nicknames, you make it shorter so you can be like, it's, it's not longer. Not Jerry, it's Jer. No. Right? So you can just in a story, you say, oh, Jer was over. No, you get it every time, Crazy Larry? Yeah, because we wanted to emphasize that he is a <laughs> fucking lunatic. Good, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't tell you this. One of the things that we used to do is that he would ask us for money to get Subway sandwiches, and we would tell him we would get him half of a six inch. <laughs> if he would stand by us while we were playing Killer Instinct and breathe on the other person's face as we were playing. <laughs> So that they would lose. So this gigantic... Are you eating the other half of the six inch? Yeah, 100%. I would get a whole one. So I'd get a foot long. I would eat three quarters of it. Oh. And then Crazy Larry would get my the, the quarter that I, I didn't want. What are you getting... What, when you're that age, yeah. what are you getting a Subway? Cold cut combo all the way. Cold cut combo is pretty cool. Cold cut combo. Yeah. And uh, so we would sit here and he would just breathe right on someone's face and they would... They, they, you couldn't take it. You couldn't take it. What? It was like cheese, you going cheese on the... Cold cut combo? Always. And provolone? American? What are you going No, I would go for the American. Yeah, American. Yeah. Oh, Christ! No! Oh, she just ran it on me. Uh, okay, so I get in, and JJ said, yeah, he's no longer allowed. We we filed a, a criminal criminal trespassing on Crazy Larry. I was like, yeah. Jesus Christ, what happened? Yeah, I got serious. Yeah, so they're playing chess, and uh, JJ needs to go to the bathroom. And so no one else is there, and he asks... Orchid's tough, dude. It's so hard to tell stories and do this. So, JJ says, <laughs> that's right. So JJ says, I asked Crazy Larry, can you just please watch the Redemption Center as I go to the bathroom? So Don't like, screw up for right. a minute. All you have to do is watch it and make sure no one steals anything. Yep. So, Crazy Larry says, sure. And JJ goes to the bathroom. And from this point forward, the rest of the story comes from a third party. There's okay. a guy named George who was there who was playing Killer Instinct at the time. Whoa. And George said, what happened? New character introduced in the third act. New Be careful. Character. So JJ said that he went to the bathroom and George said that as soon as JJ walked off, Crazy Larry went behind the Redemption Center without saying a word, went behind the Redemption Center, put on one of the apron thingies, and then yelled at a group of kids who were standing at the front of the arcade. He yelled, yo! And he said they turned around. These were like young kids. And he yeah. said, so they immediately thought it was like a fight or whatever. And he's sure. like, yo, looking right at them. And they're like, yo, what you want, man? Yeah. And Crazy Larry goes, it's not what I want. It's what you want. And then George said he grabbed the biggest fucking stuffed animal and threw it at them. And the people were like, oh, my God. And so Crazy Larry just started throwing stuff from the Redemption Center, the video game. So they like had a PlayStation, all that stuff throwing it at the people. The at original the, Sony PlayStation. Throwing it at, at the people at the front of the arcade. And by the time JJ got out, so George immediately panics, runs to the back and is knocking on the door, trying to get JJ out. By the time JJ gets back, he said he's down to like spider rings and bouncy balls. He had, he had cleared the Redemption, Redemption Center out. So what is the motivation of a character like this? <laughs> I have no idea. Chaos for chaos sake? Or is Again, he, does like, he think he's a Robin Hood I like, character? I'd like to point out his name. <laughs> <laughs> and you asked a minute ago, why do we always use the longer version of his name? It requires it. Because this lunatic just emptied the Redemption Center out for no apparent reason. Wow. Yeah. It's not what I want. It's what you want. <laughs> And then he fucking throwing big old stuffed animals and video game systems and the remote control cars. Oh my god. The things that they never got rid of. Oh wow. So real quick as we wrap up, you, you go one more here. I'll just share something real quick. You're okay. talking about the Sony PlayStation. <laughs> yes. The original. By the way, do you remember when it was impressive that they could animate a woman like Orchid? All the guys talked about it, you know. Yes. How she looked and everything. Because 8-bit was not a thing anymore. And today it's like, it just looks like claymation. Oh my god, and it's so disrespectful too. Like her boobies are terrible. Couldn't walk properly. Like oh that. god. Gotcha. I mean, look at her proportions. They are just... But she is kicking your ass. She man. absolutely is. It's embarrassing. If I mean, can you imagine if like JJ and George and Crazy Larry were here to see this? Crazy Larry's gotta be like dead in Holland. He's 100% dead. <laughs> Not in Holland, he's in a ditch somewhere. Five miles from where he grew up. That's right. His, All right. His girlfriend peed on him and... <laughs> no girlfriend! There was no he girlfriend. He peed on himself. <laughs> he 100% peed on himself. Uh, quick... Uh, Slept in hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even... Does that mean raw hamburger meat? Or yeah, like bad right. cold patties laying on him? I know this has happened him? to you. You've left, like, as a teenager, mm -hmm. a quarter of a, of a Big Mac mm -hmm. in your car. 
Oh, yeah, for and sure. And the next day you go in. You get in the car. There's a distinct smell. South Texas or Central Texas, so hot, that food has continued to cook in the car. I like to call that the crazy Larry aroma. Because that is... <laughs> That is exactly what he smelled like. That, you know, it reminds me of that elementary school junior high burger that, I mean, I grew up loving burgers. Yes. I need to tell a story about my dad, a whole a whole episode about my dad and burgers someday. But, did you do it? <gasps> yeah! yeah! Eat it, orchid! That's a great way to end right there. I'm not even playing past that. You're disproportionate! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right in your all blonde boobies. <laughs> all right. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think uh, it, 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 well done. I don't done. know why I attacked her all blonde boobies. That's not supportive. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to say a man drew him. They're attacking him. I'm more, attacking his oblong. More than anyone else. His oblong boobies. They're terrible. His... They're insulting to everyone. Okay. All right. So, uh, it... <laughs> Dude, it's so fun being here with you uh, and, and, and changing up the structure a little bit of these. So uh, I don't know if you realize this, but we do have to finish the beverage at the end of these segments. I don't like this part of the bit. Well, it's my favorite part. So in between now and the next time we talk to you, it's Todd and Mark. I mean, put it down. Oh, it's so cold. See ya. <laughs>